Hi, it's Sean Hines from Rotrek. I am going to show you how to use the electrical system in your new Rotrek Incorporated built unit. All right, we're going to go over the control panel. Whether your unit has lithium modules or AGM batteries, you have this exact control panel in your unit. Your awning controls in and out for your awning controls. Your gauges here indicate whether your tanks are full, empty, or what stage they're at. So you have your propane, gray tank, freshwater, gray tank, and black tank, and they'll indicate accordingly. Power step on or off. So this indicates whether your power step will operate when the sliding door is, is in operation. If you open the door and you want the step to stay out, you'll turn it on. Sorry, power step on will allow it to move in and out. Your water pump switch turns on and off your water pump. Patio light for the outside light on the coach. Inverter on and off. Inverter should always be off unless you're intending to utilize it. Battery disconnect disconnects the 12 volt power supply from the interior of the coach completely. And we're going to go over the Ecotrek modules first. In this case, we already have the system power on, but I will show you how to activate a lithium module, what's required in order to turn it on. So, If temperatures are correct and all of the systems are in play, the light will come on. If not, you can activate it by hitting the reset button. You will have power in the coach after you hit your battery disconnect switch. This joins the 12 volt system to the battery. So the lithium modules in your vehicle have an operating range of 12.2 to 13.6 volts, operating temperatures of about four degrees Celsius. At four degrees Celsius, the batteries will not allow a charge into them. So you'll need to warm them up using the heaters. In order to do so, you just turn the batteries on and plug the coach in or go for a ride allowing the engine to provide voltage to the heating system for the batteries. And in the event that you need to go through a reset procedure, there are two methods to do so. Turn on the battery, hit the reset button. If that does not work, you'll need to reset by starting the engine of the vehicle and activating the underhood generator or plugging the coach in and turning on the inverter. At that point, you can then hit the reset button, hold it for three seconds, and the battery should come on. This process can be repeated a couple of times if necessary, holding the button for three seconds, releasing for three seconds. Okay, for charging of your battery systems, there are a couple of sources that you can utilize and what it means for you. So. Lithium modules must always be turned on in order to take a charge. You have a solar controller, which is located just up here in this cabinet. And when the solar is on, there is nothing that you need to do in order to activate that solar charger. It's connected to the batteries and to the solar panels with no interaction on your part. In order to charge using the inverter, the inverter must be turned on and plugged into shore power for the batteries to charge. This program is set up so that your lithium modules will be charged at approximately 36, 36 amps per hour. So a depleted system will take a number of hours to charge. Underhood generator is the other alternative for charging your system. You require starting the vehicle in order for this to occur. That can be done while you're idling at the campsite or while you're driving down the road. Again, for the lithium modules to take a charge, they must be turned on at all times. All right. AGM battery equipped vehicles are far simpler to use than the Ecotrek modules, as there are no on and off switches for the batteries. The simple battery disconnect switch will disconnect the AGM battery from the coach, allowing you to walk away from your coach. The AGM battery will charge with the underhood generator the solar or being plugged in and the inverter turned on without any interaction from you. 
Your coach is equipped with a 3K inverter. It has a pass through through it, so there is no transfer switch in your vehicle. This occurs within the inverter itself. So if you have your batteries on and your inverter, you can be self-contained running your air conditioner, your, your microwave, or any other plug-in appliance that you wish. However, you have to be cognizant of the amount of power that you're using as a battery is an un, not an unlimited source of energy. One thing about the inverter in this vehicle is it has two switches, one located on the inverter and the other located here at the remote panel. This is often referred to as the remote switch. The other is located on the inverter. At the top of the inverter, this switch will turn it on or off. It should always be off on the inverter so the remote switch takes priority. The inverter in this unit can run your air conditioner, your microwave, or other appliances that you would plug into your household current. The other feature to your inverter is the charge system. This is activated when the batteries are turned on or and when you're plugged in. If you have an AGM system, the batteries are automatically charged when the inverter is turned on. It's extremely important to turn off your inverter on these units because you will kill the power in the batteries if it's left on. Um, it's important to turn it off at the inverter as we discussed earlier. One of the quickest ways to identify if the inverter is turned on is to turn off the inverter at the remote switch and look at the microwave. If the lights are still flashing on the microwave, it means that someone has turned on your inverter at the inverter and you should turn it off. Indicators that this has happened will be lower than normal battery life. As a result of that, your boondocking experience will suffer. To connect your RV to shore power, there are a number of steps that need to be done. First and foremost is turn on your batteries. Then turn on the inverter. After this, you can go outside and plug in your coach. The short power cord that's supplied with your unit is a twist lock. It has only one way to go in and then you would tighten it down, locking it into the outlet. Then you would turn or then you would plug into the post, then activate the power at the turn at the post. So located above the driver's head is the instrument panel. On one side you have your household style breakers and the other you have your auto style fuses. The auto style fuses are for the 12 volt system such as your light, your thermostat, anything that operates off of battery alone and these are the same as your house. They operate on the household current. This unit here is a ground fault interrupter circuit it must see power in order to reset, so you would have to have the batteries on, the inverter turned on, and or plugged into shore power while activating the reset button. So your road track is equipped with an underhood generator. It's located underneath the vehicle here, hidden behind the shroud, so it's protected. This item is your voltage regulator. Lithium units are equipped with a voltage regulator which determines how much charge is given to the batteries to protect them. If you start your engine and you do not see this light, you will have a blown fuse that is located right here. This is the serviceable part of this unit. At every 5,000 kilometer interval or every oil change, you should have the GU belt inspected for fraying and for clearances against the hoses. Make sure that those clearances are kept so that you don't run into any problems in the future. Your solar panels are located on the roof of your vehicle and require almost no maintenance. If you're going to wash them at all, just rinse them off with water. Most of the time the rain will take care of anything that needs to be done. So your solar controller has an indicator on it. It will tell you whether the solar power is connected, solar system is connected to the unit, whether you have battery power, and what rate of charge you're getting, all done on this screen. 
There's no input required by you. When the batteries are on, it recognizes that the batteries are there. When the sun is shining, it recognizes that the solar panels are being uh, utilized and will allow the controls that are set by parameters on this unit before it's installed in your coach. All right. The lighting in your coach is all LED and they're activated by pushing them on and off. You can activate each light individually or they will turn off if you leave the coach and disconnect the batteries. In diagnosing and troubleshooting lithium modules, if they won't activate, there's a couple of reasons that this is possible. One of them could be temperature. The other could be that they need to be reset. The reset procedure is done by starting the engine of the coach or plugging the coach in and turning on the inverter, then applying, turning on the switch. If the blue light doesn't come on, hit the reset button and hold it for three seconds, release it for three seconds, and hit the button again for three seconds. This can be done a couple of times, and that will activate the system inside the battery to stay on. The other thing that you need to check is the fuses for the Balmar to ensure that they're on so you get charging when you're running the vehicle. With the ignition turned on, you should see cycling of the codes for the Balmar. There's nothing that needs any interpretation from you. If you do not see this, there are two fuses that are located right here. They can be checked to ensure that there is power going to the Balmar. This must be working in order for the charging to occur from the underhood generator. So that covers the electrical part of the walkthrough for your vehicle. If you have any further questions at all, don't hesitate to check us out on the website that we'll find further information to get a hold of us.